Uh, I'm Sheng Liu from Shanghai Jiao Tong University. This is joint work with Shui Han, Lin Li, uh, and Dao Gu. Uh, in this talk, I will introduce public key encryption and uh, uh, its uh, tightly resi resilient multi challenge CCE security. Then I will introduce a new concept, namely quasi adaptive hash processing, and define two new properties for, uh, for this uh, hash processing. Then I will show a uh, generic construction of public encryption from quasi-adaptive hash processing and, uh, prove and uh, show how to achieve tight, leakage, resilient, uh, multi-challenge CCA security. I also give some instances of uh, quasi-adaptive hash processing and conclude the talk. Now, a public key encryption scheme consists of three algorithms, key generation, uh, encryption, and decryption. Well, it happens that uh, under a same public key, there might be a lot of uh, server text. For example, if uh, 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 for a server, server may receive a lot of ch challenge, uh, a lot of server text hidden for him and uh, sent by the client. So how to protect the message hidden in the huge amount of server text? So for, for public encryption, uh, we define the traditional uh, standard secure notion is a CCA security, so it is an indistinguishable security against a chosen cipher text attack. It is characterized by a security game played by a challenger and adversary. For the adversary, it uh, knows the public key, it has access to multiple access to encryption oracle and a de decryption oracle. For encryption oracle, it will output a sequence of challenge cipher text. And for the uh, decryption oracle, it will do uh, decryption services for the adversary, but it refused to decrypt the challenge subtext. The CCA security requirement requires that the, the sequence of challenge subtext, it should be hard for the adversary to tell whether the challenge subtext are the encryption of the left messages all the encryption of the right message. Even the two sequences of messages are chosen by the, the adversary. Uh, since the security is usually is done by a security reduction, uh, uh, if there's a adversary A uh, breaks the CCA security game, then we construct another algorithm, a PPT algorithm B, which solves a hard problem. Uh, this is usually shown that uh, the, the Security reduction usually shows that its advantage usually up bounded by a security loss factor L times uh, the advantage of B. And the security loss factor, if it, is a, if it is a constant or at least linear to the security parameter, then we call it a tight security reduction. With a tight security reduction, uh, it, it is desirable because it, uh, we can avoid security uh, augment that impose into the uh, into the secret uh, into the uh, uh, into the public key scheme, uh, so we can make it more efficient. That's why we t uh, we focus on tight security reduction. Uh, it's well known that uh, the single challenge CCA security implies multiple challenge CCA security by a simple hybrid argument. We can prove this uh, security reduction, and the security reduction parameter is Q, where Q is the number of the challenge server text, or the number of the encryption query made by the adversary. This security reduction is not a tight one. Recent years, a lot of work uh, uh, focusing on how to achieve multi challenge CCA security. Uh, most of them use two approaches. One approach is to, to make use of uh, uh, non-interactive zero-knowledge proof system, and the other use uh, variants of hash proof system. Um, on the other hand, we can also uh, adapt the multi challenge CCA security into a liquid resilient uh, setting. Uh, it deals with uh, adversary who can implement side channel attack. In that case, the adversary may know some information about the secret key. So to model that, we allow the adversary to Query a liquid oracle, and the, the oracle will will uh, reveal some information 
of the secret key to the adversary, of course we, we, we have assumption that the leakage uh, oracle, uh, the leakage, the total amount of leakage is uh, bounded. So it is a leakage bounded model. So in this way, we can, uh, we can define a leakage resilient uh, multi tally indices is security notion. Up to now, there's only, work, uh, only one work that achieve efficient and tightly uh, liquid resilient multi tally indices is secure uh, public key encryption. Uh, that, is, uh, by, uh, that is done by RB ETL in 2013. It makes use of a non interactive zero knowledge uh, system to, uh, to achieve with a tight uh, security. Uh, but the size, the size is a public key, and the server title overhead is, a, is, is a very large. So in this work, we will uh, try to solve the problem in another way, and resulting in a more efficient uh, public encryption. So our, in our approach, the building, uh, the, 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 technical, the technical building block uh, is a quasi-adaptive hash proof system. So uh, for such a hash proof system, it defines a hash function over set X. And the hash function is indexed by the secret key, SK. And uh, on the other hand, it is associated with a collection of languages. Remember that for the traditional hash proof system introduced by Kram Shoup, for each hash proof system, it is associated with a fixed language, but now we are associated with a collection of language. And we can project the secret key into different languages. As a result, we have a collection of projection keys, and each projection key depends on the languages. That's why we call our hash proof system quasi adaptive. Similarly, for each uh, for each instant in the set X, we can evaluate uh, the hash system, uh, the hash value with the secret key. But if the instance in the language LI, for any language LI, uh, we can evaluate uh, the hash value by the projection key on the language together with the witness of the, the instance. So there are two modes to evaluate the hash value if the instance in the language, either in L0, L1, L2. Now we define such a hash proof system with two new uh, properties, and the properties are parameterized statistical property. Uh, the first one is L0, L1, uh, universal property. It said that given that uh, two projection keys on language 0, L0, and L1, for any instance that is not in the language 0 and L1, then the hash value is, is, uh, pseudo, uh, is, uh, is uniformly distributed. So what does that mean? It means if the secret key is uniformly distributed, so, so it has a full entropy. So given two projection keys on two languages, then we have a security loss. However, their remaining entropy in the secret key will guarantee that uh, the hash value of X is uniformly distributed as long as the instance is chosen neither in language L0 nor in L1. So this is a, a universal property. So another property is L0, L1 key switching property. Or it said that uh, 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 given two, uh, two public uh, uh, projection keys on language L0 and L1, it's the it is statistically close to two projection keys on the language L0 L1, but with two independent secret keys. More precisely, if the secret key is uniformly distributed, we can compute the two projection keys, but can we always replace the two projection keys to another one, another two, and another two, each of them is protected from an independent secret key. So two independent. So one secret key is replaced to two independent secret keys. Another uh, important uh, uh, property is L0 multi-tracking properties. Uh, it said when the secret key is uniformly distributed for several uh, instances randomly chosen from language L0, 
then the hash values of those instances are pseudo-random. We can always extend the uh, two properties for quasi-adaptive hash system into leakage resilient setting. That means if the two properties universal and case weighting is also hold in the presence of a key leakage, then we call the two properties are leakage resilient universal and the leakage resilient case weighting. And then the hash system becomes a K, K, uh, leakage resilient one. Now uh, we are ready to, uh, to show our construction of public encryption from a quasi-adaptive hash system. It, uh, uh, make, it makes use of three, quad, uh, quad, uh, three quadratic adaptive hash system. And uh, so the secret key consists of the three keys. So three hash system has three keys and uh, the public key of the PKE consists of the three projection keys of the three secret key. And all the projection keys are on the same language L. Now let's see, how to encrypt a message M? To encrypt a message M, first we randomly choose an instance from language L. Then we compute three hash values because we have three hash proceedings. The, three, the first hash value is used to hide the message. So we compute D. D is the first hash value uh, plus M message. And uh, then we prove that uh, uh, this, uh, this subtext is valid. We compute the second hash value and the third hash value. And we add them together, and the value is found to approve pi. So the subtext is uh, instant X, D, and pi. To decrypt a server text, the server text is x, d, pi. We can always use the three secret keys for the three hash proof system to compute three hash values. One hash value to re-uncover the message and the other two hash value to add them up, get the value to check whether it is equal to the proof of pi in the server text. If it is, then we, we, we output the message. Otherwise, we think that we take it as a, an invalid one, reject it. Okay, the correctness is also followed from the correctness of the three hash proof systems. Now let's see how to achieve tight multi challenge CCA security. Remember that in our CCA security game, the adversary has, uh, he can see the public key, he has multiple uh, uh, queries on encrypted oracle and the decryption oracle. So now let's uh, uh, to, uh, to prove, the proof procedure is five steps. The first step is that we make a change in the encryption oracle. Uh, instead of uh, evaluating the hash value, the three hash values, we make encryption, the three, three hash values, we do not use the public uh, evaluation mode by the project key. Now we use the secret key to compute the three hash values. That's so always okay because the instances are chosen from language L. So they're equivalent. The second step is also a change in the encryption oracle. Now we change the language in the encryption oracle from language L to another language L0. So that means that when we generate uh, the, the challenger subtext, we choose instance X, not from L, but from another language L0. This is also okay because of a subset membership problem. The third step is uh, we, we do a change in the decryption oracle. So for the decryption oracle, uh, when we decrypt a server text which is x, d, pi, we will check the instant x. If it is not in the language L, we reject it immediately. And this, we will show this, is, this change is indistinguishable because of a rejection lemma. This lemma, we will be justify it later. Now we skipped it because it's too complicated. Okay, now, now, the encryption oracle only, only, uh, only work on language L0. The decryption oracle only work on language L. Okay, so the behavior of the two oracles, in fact, can be characterized by the projection keys on language L0 and L. Now we can use the 
L, L0 key switching property of the first hash pool CTM. That means the project, two project, projection keys and the same security key can be replaced by two projection keys, but with two different independent security key. So we change the security key working on language L, working on language L0 in the encryption oracle, in the encryption oracle, change, change it into a totally new security key. Okay, now the encryption oracle use a new, new key that is different from the security key in the public key, different from the, the key uh, used in the decryption uh, oracle. So as this new key is used to compute hash value, which is hide the messages in the cipher text. Now, according to the L, according to the L0 multi-extracting property of the first hash pool system, all the hash values are pseudo random, we can replace them into truly random values. If they are truly random values, then they are perfectly hide all the plain text. Then the cipher tag, then we are done. The CCE security, we are done. But we are almost done because we skip an important lemma, which is reject lemma. So we, we go back to step three. In step three, we see that if for decryption, given a server text, if the instance in the server text is not belong to the language L, we reject it immediately. Now we show that if X is not uh, is not belong, uh, does not belong to uh, language L, then this equation, the checking equation, will not hold. So this is a rejection lemma. So we define the event uh, uh, by bad. We will show that bad happens hardly. So the probability that bad happens is, is negligible. So this is our, our, our goal. Now let's see. Uh, in step three, we see encryption oracle only work on language L0, decryption oracle only work on language L. So all the behavior are characterized by the projection keys on L0 and on L. Then according to the LL0 universal property of the second hash pool system, then for any instance that, that is not in the L0 language, then this, uh, this, this uh, hash, hash value will be uniformly distributed. So this equation will not, will not hold. The bet will not happen. That, so we can always put x from L0 in this condition in when we check the bed. We, only this condition uh, is satisfied can we check a bed. In that case, when we check a base, check a, check a bed, we also use projection, projection case on L0. So encryption, decryption oracle, we check bed. The three parts, the three place only use projection case uh, on language L and L0. Now according to L, L0 key switching property of the second and the third hash pool system, we can always change the case now. We change the case that uh, appears in L0. Now we only change the case for the second and the third hash pool system. The original one is, uh, is uh, uh, SK hat SK tilde. Now the new one is SK hat uh, prime, SK tilde prime. So for language L0, we replace, new, replace with, a new, uh, with new, two new secret keys. Okay, now let's see. Now, uh, encryption oracle, decryption oracle, uh, we have a new case, old case, but uh, the new key, old case, old case, uh, uh, they are all projected on L0 or L. So according, we can, again, we can use uh, So now we can, we can, we can uh, partition the instance in the encryption oracle when generating the challenger ciphertext 
for all the challenge receptors, all the instances now, originally they are from L0. Now we partition it into two languages. So half of them, half of them will come from L0, and the other half will come from L, L1, according to the serial number of the challenge subtax. If there are four challenge subtax, we'll choose the first one, first two instances from L0, and the other two instances from L1. In that case, uh, in incremental oracle, the, sequ the new secret key are protected now in not only in a language L0, but, all, but also on L1. Now we can use L0, L1 universal property of the second hash pool system and put a condition in check or bad. This condition only uh, X belong to the union of L0 and L1, do we check bad? Okay. And, uh, and this is, uh, um, next, let's see. All the projection keys, uh, all, the, all the projection keys are work, working on L0 and L1. Now we can use the key switching property. We can put the two, one case into two case for the third hash proceed team. Similarly, we now repartition all the instances in the encryption oracle. We partition the instance according to second bit of the serial number of the challenge subtax. In that case, all the new case now are projected in L0 and L1. Now we use the case switching property again. Then two new case becomes four case. We carry it on and on. Then four becomes eight. Eight becomes uh, 11, then after log Q steps, Q is the number of the challenge subtext, then we will fully randomize all the secret keys used in the third, in the third hash pool system. And when we check about it, we all reuse the, the, new, the newly secret, uh, new, new secret key. And those key only use once there. So with different input, this will be randomly distribute, distributed. So pi, so bad will never happen. Okay, then we, we, we have a finished the rejection lemma. Now let's have a quick uh, conclusion. The summary of the proof will be use the universal and the case switching property, and we only use log Q steps. So we only use the log Q subset membership problem. That's why we can achieve tight security reduction. But if we can use uh, the leaky resilient universal or case switching, then our proof can become leaky resilient multi challenge CCA security is also tight. The initiation uh, can be, uh, is, uh, the hash proceeding can be initiated from a, a symmetric pairing group. Uh, we skip it here and uh, let's uh, go to the conclusion. We introduce the concept of uh, quasi adaptive hash proceeding. Uh, which is generalization of hash proceed introduced by, uh, by Krem and Shoup. And we define two new properties, and uh, we also give uh, a modular construction of public encryption from the, this new hash proceed team. And the uh, efficient initiation of a symmetric group shows that our, our scheme is very efficient. The public key only have four elements, and the subset overhead, overhead only uh, seven elements. And uh, the uh, the, the hard problem is uh, a symmetric DFM problem. So th this is by far the most efficient public encryption. Thank you. We have time for a question. And if there is none, then let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>